What did your school ban back in the day? Story 1. Pokemon. I was in elementary when the game came out. My first game was Pokemon Red. Kids loved it. Pokemon clothes and merch were popular. The school hated it, and they were tired of hearing about Pokemon. Pokemon everything was banned. Shirts, games, even talking about Pokemon would get you in trouble. If you wore any Pokemon merch, you'd have to put different clothes on. I remember some kids wearing their art shirts that were dirty and covered in paint because the teachers would prefer kids to wear that before allowing kids to see any Pokemon reference. Story 2. So much stuff. Magic. The gathering was banned, saying Doe like Homer Simpson and basically everything Bart ever said. Was banned. Rock band shirts were banned. No Fear was banned. Big Johnson shirts were banned. Daisy Duke shorts were banned. Anything video game related was banned. Halloween was banned. If the ultra-religious of southern Indiana even caught a whiff that something could be satanic or improper, it was gone almost immediately. Story 3. When I was in grade school in the 80s, I was like the kid in Goonies that always needed a hit from my inhaler. They changed policies to where any meds kids had needed to be locked up with the school nurse. I was out in recess and a bad asthma attack hit. No inhaler. I collapsed. And teachers weren't able to find the nurse to get the key for my inhaler. So I guess I almost died. Woke up intubated in the ER. The school changed the policy so that all teachers had access to the medication locker. Story 4. They banned boys and girls from sitting together on the bus for school field trips. Another school in our district had an issue where a girl sat in the back of the bus and blew like five dude. Wild stuff. Story 5. This is going to sound very stupid and prison-like. Starting fourth grade for me, the neighborhood where I lived was drawn into a different elementary school in our district. So at this new school, the cafeteria was the worst. We had to be seated in order, eight students to a side, girl bringers, boy bringers, boy buyers, and girl buyers, some order like that. If the classroom seated before you had seven on one bench, maybe even on the other side of the cafeteria, first in line had to sit at that table, and the rest of your class filed to the next empty table. No one could get up during lunch to talk to or trade seats with anyone to sit with their friends until the lunch monitor sends your table to put trash in the cans and return trays. If it got too loud, certain tables or possibly the whole cafeteria had to be silent for two, five minutes. They never said, hey, keep the voices to indoor levels. They went straight to these two tables, have to stop all noise for three minutes. So here we are with the rule. No sign language during cafeteria silence. We didn't know actual sign language, but a lot of us girls were pretty fluent in the sign language alphabet. We're being quiet. However, we're punished from communicating. Story 6 Hats I graduated high school over 20 years ago, and they had those bands then, and they still do now. I have never heard a single good reason why hats are somehow a distraction from the educational process, nor how they're disrespectful. That's the only thing administration falls on, but they don't hold water. So to me, it's only ever been a power play and nothing else. Story 7 Tamagotchis I remember desperately wanting one, waited ages, and was so excited when my parents gifted me a knockoff cheap one. Then literally the next day, they were banned at school. Devastating. Also, Pogs got banned after a while. I think they ended a few friendships. Story 8. In elementary middle school, handheld consoles. We weren't even allowed to take them out at recess or lunch, but that wasn't enforced too much. Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon cards. They compared trading to gambling. Yu-Gi-Oh! was unbanned by the time I was in 6th grade. Bakugan. One kid got his stolen on a field trip once and they didn't want to deal with that again. But Damon, or whatever that Japanese marble shooter thing was called, kids were trying to shoot other kids' hands instead of at their badamans like how the games intended. Beyblade. Kids were modding their tops with metal bits and teachers were worried about metal flying around and hurting kids. In high school, spaghetti straps as well as hoods slash hats indoors. Story 9. Not school, but at a summer day camp sometime between, I think, 1999 and 2001, they banned Pokemon cards. Not in and of itself that bad, except they did it like three hours into camp, and then the counselors walked around and confiscated everyone's cards. At the end of the day, they basically opened up a closet and let 200 kids claim their cards. Suffice to say, it was absolute fucking pandemonium, and there were a lot of kids who found new cards in their collections and a bunch of other kids who lost cards they'd shower up to camp with. This was the first distinct memory I have of lying to authority figures. Story 10. I started public school in 1955. 
Boys were not permitted to wear jeans or have shoe taps. A schoolmate defied the ban by wearing shoe tops. The school principal required him to remove the taps from his shoes in the presence of the entire assembled student body. I started high school in 1965. The school administration would not permit female students to wear miniskirts, despite the pleading of female students and a few parents. Story 11. In the mid-80s, we all had to sign a pledge in high school saying we wouldn't bring knives to school. I guess another school in the district was having gang issues, but honestly, bringing knives hadn't occurred to any of us before that point. Funny thing is, quite a few boys had gun racks with rifles in their trucks, and my locker mate kept a bottle of rum in our locker. The school really did have other things to worry about. Story 12 Google Our high school had some kind of contract with this really shitty, school-appropriate search engine called NetTracker. They banned using Google in school because it wasn't scholarly. Only NetTracker was allowed. They tried extending this to beyond the school. They wanted us to use only NetTracker for internet searches outside school and sent home a pamphlet about internet rules outside the classroom. They said that students shouldn't have Android phones. I got a referral for having a Moto X smartphone. This was in 2015. Story 13. Card games or even being found with a deck of cards about your person. Loads of us used to bring decks of cards to play at lunchtimes. Pretty inoffensive games like Snap, Cheat, Gin Rummy, Go Fish, etc. The school banned them because they said it encouraged gambling. Never mind that none of us were actually gambling. It was the idea of gambling that was evoked by the cards. Story 14. I'm the reason Pokemon cards got banned at my elementary school. This was is when they were first coming out, and Pokemon was the biggest deal for kids at the time even bigger than it got during COVID. I never got an allowance coming from a dirt-poor family and got bullied a lot as I was always the new kid. So I worked mowing lawns, saved up enough money for a single pack, and pulled the original first edition holographic Charizard. I was over the moon. It was the coolest thing I owned and the first thing I ever got with my money from a job I worked hard at. I took it to school to show my friends during breakfast. Then Barry, yeah, I still remember your name for this and a whole bunch of other reasons. The fifth grade bully saw what I had, grabbed it from my hands and ripped it to pieces in front of me and my friends. I jumped at him, punched him, then of course me being the absolute dweeb I always was, got thrashed, broke my one pair of glasses and a bloodied nose. I got suspended. Barry got no punishment, as I can recall, because he claimed it was his. Vice principal didn't care. And then Pokemon cards were banned. I suddenly went from being unpopular to the most unpopular kid in school. And my friends even stopped talking to me because everyone knew I was the reason they got banned. Edit. Spelling cause autocorrect is horrible. Also, my parents grounded me too, so it was a double whammy. Story 15, backpacks and lockers. Had a bogus bomb threat called in when I was in sixth grade. The entire district banned backpacks and lockers afterwards. Everyone had to carry all the books to and from school without a bag of any kind. This was still in effect by the time I graduated high school. Story 16, mohawks. Like big, spiky, punk mohawks, and it was only like three students. Unfortunately for the school, one of those students, who I knew from elementary school, was low-key, super smart, and was one of the top in our entire class, took the fights to the city council, got the story covered in the local paper, and got the rule reversed. That dude also ran for class president one year with posters saying, Ron Jeremy supports for class president. Story 17. Nuggeting. I don't know how well known this was is, but basically you take everything out of someone's backpack, turn it inside out, put everything back in and zip it back up. It caused problems. Nothing was safe. Gym bags, pencil cases, sweatshirts, if it had a zipper, it could be nuggeted. Teachers began to fall victim too, and shortly after that it was outlawed. Story 18. I remember shooting dice in the gym in like 7th or 8th grade, and I'll never forget the way the teacher screamed when she saw us. I was so confused as to why we were being scolded, yelling, What the hell did we think we're doing? You would have thought she caught us shooting heroin or each other. So yeah, no dice after that, I guess. Story 19. Metal silverware in the cafeteria because one day a fight broke out and one girl stabbed another in the face with fork, right on the bridge of her nose. Missed both her eyes by centimeters. After that, it was all plastic. Then the next semester, someone used one of the hard plastic trays to slam someone in the face and they banned those too. Oh, I forgot about the t-shirts. Big Johnson was huge in those days, and administration finally caught on. This was mid-90ES. Story 20. In middle school, they banned backpacks. This was also an accelerated school where we had giant textbooks for each class, and only a five-minute passing period between classes. This meant carrying two, three giant textbooks, 
notebooks and pencil cases to each class with no way of storing them. Story 21. Hoodies because of the gangs. We didn't have at the time. We do now, 20 years later. Pretty much the student body and some teachers decided it was bogus, and one week we wore them in. It was winter in the Midwest. How dare they take away the comfort of a hoodie? The principal who made the ban was a lady from a very urban location in Arizona. She would eventually, almost literally, be ran out of town on a rail. She made many more super unpopular choices, picked a fight with the teachers who taught the trades, some of which were basically local folk heroes. Her biggest folly was she told students they would be suspended for a week if they didn't come in the Friday during first shotgun season. In the past, the rule was students had to do the work ahead of time to be off. That season used to be huge even in the region. She had to back down when she realized she couldn't suspend a third of the school LOL. Story 22. In the 80s in grade school and junior high, we played a game we called suicide. I may be forgetting some rules, but you threw a tennis or racquetball up against a wall. One of the other players had to get it after it bounced off the wall and keep the game going. If you tried to catch the ball but dropped it, it had to touch you, just missing it didn't count. You had to run and touch the wall before another player grabbed the ball, threw it at you, and hit you with it. If they hit you with the ball before you touched the wall, you got the firing squad. Firing squad was when you had to stand against the wall and face the other players. Then they all took turns, or maybe just the one who hit you with the ball, throwing the ball at you once as hard as they could. Once firing squad was over, the game continued as normal. We played this for years without any real issues. In seventh grade, one kid got hit in the eye during firing squad and got really hurt. The school banned it after that. A lot of times kids that hated each other would play just to get firing squad on the person they hated. It was a way to fight without actually fighting. As an adult, I look back and think we were so stupid. The initial game wasn't so bad. If it stopped when you got hit with the ball before you touched the wall, that would probably be fine. The firing squad part was just dangerous and dumb, though. Story 23 guys wearing skirts. At the time, Janko fading out of style and kickwear were big amongst a group of us. Some of us split the seams of our pants and sewed the legs together into a skirt. We rolled with that for a bit until the school decided that was against school code. In protest, my friend showed up to school in an ankle-length skirt made from U.S. flags. School really did not like that, and he was suspended. Someone took the case to the ACLU, probably my flag-skirted friend, and a representative showed up to the school. The school caved to legal pressures and dropped their ban pretty quick. Funny thing is, if they just ignored it in the first place, the trend would have died as fast as it started. But because it became a bit of a deal, we rolled that style for a lot longer than we'd have otherwise done. Story 24. My school district banned the color black. We had to wear generic uniforms of plain button-ups and slacks, but we could choose the colors. Their whole theory was that kids show their identity through clothes, so if you remove that, we'd get along more. The goth kids just wore all black every day looking like some business casual vampires, so they banned black as a color for everybody. Story 25 after September 11th in high school, my friends and I would hide stink bombs around the school every lunch setting them off, and one day an announcement came over the PA that anyone caught with one would be expelled for acts of terrorism, cause people can be allergic to the ingredients. In middle school we would shoot paper hornets at each other, folded paper you can shoot with a elastic, until people started adding staples into them causing them to stick into your skin. Story 26, Crazy Carpets. They were those hard, molded plastic pieces with holes for handles in them that kids used to run and then slide down hills down. Banned because the plastic got very cold and could freeze. Then, when kids grabbed them and ran back up the hill, or run and slide down, the ends and sides of the edges would hit kids in the face, near the eye, fingers, ears, etc., and literally slice us open. Story 27 rolling backpacks. While relatively few had them, they were deemed a distraction when those who had them and arrived late would wheel them down the stairs behind them, creating a very audible thump each time causing some teachers who had rooms near the stairwells to get annoyed. Then, when going up the stairs, people wouldn't wear them and pull them up the stairs one at a time exacerbated by smaller students carrying all of their books which created congestion. Eventually they rolled back the restriction but you had to wear them like normal backpacks and couldn't wheel them around. Story 28. 
In middle school, there were these gel bracelets that came in all sorts of colors. Eventually, kids started mixing and matching them to convey certain things. That is, I have a boyfriend, girlfriend, I am bi, I'm popular. There was also this trend in which kids would snap them off of others that they deemed did not align with whatever they were trying to represent, usually the I am popular bracelet wearers. When faculty caught on to this, they were afraid it would lead to clicking and or deviant behavior and swiftly banned them. Story 29. Any bottle brought in from the outside that had a lid. Water bottles, soda bottles, juice bottles. If it had a lid that could be removed and put back on it was banned. Why? Because a girl brought a bottle of orange juice that was actually one quarter vodka to school with her. My high school had a long tradition of that kind of overreaction. Also, bear in mind, this was the 90s. Hardly anyone carried water bottles yet, and we had soda machines in the cafeteria. Story 30. Concert shirts. It was the 80s, and the metalheads kind of ruined it for everyone since heavy metal t-shirts had violent or sexually suggestive imagery on them. If you wore one to school, teachers would make you wear it inside out. I saw you 2 in concert for the first time and had to wear my concert shirt the morning after, so I just wore it inside out that day. Story 31. In Grades 1. 6. At some point, they banned Pokemon cards because we were using them for gambling. We would flip cards against each other. And if you got face up and the other kid got face down, you won the cards. You could lose 10 S's of cards at a time. Some kids wouldn't leave their good cards at home. So they got really upset when they lost them and would go crying to their parents to buy more. The parents called the school to ask why their kids were losing the cards. Teachers investigated and broke up the gambling rings. I've never actually played Pokemon with the cards. I've only gambled with them. Some of my cards still have the curve I put in them to get better flips, and some are all scratched up from being on the pavement outside. Story 32. My high school banned any type of Nerf guns due to mischievous activities on teachers with said Nerf guns. At least back then, it was innocent enough time that it was almost unfathomable that a high school kid would bring a real firearm into a school. But then a few years later, the Columbine High School massacre would happen that changed the course of American high school history. Story 33. Printed images of DBZ. There was a whole black market of them in our middle school. We'd sell color copies for 50 cents and black and whites for .10 or a quarter. There was one legendary HD Super Saiyan pic with all the Super Saiyan characters posing together that someone zoomed up and printed across four pages. It was like our own Exodia or whatever that thing's called. I managed to get my hands on one of the pages with Vegeta and part of Goku on it. What dummies we were. Story 34. We couldn't wear shorts until they relaxed the rules when I was in 10th grade, 1991. And then they couldn't be shorter than a dollar bill width or three fingers width above the knee. Boys couldn't have hair longer than the collar, although I feel like that was selectively enforced. The shorts thing was annoying because it was hot and girls could wear skirts. So what was the difference? No Bart Simpson shirts here either. The Story 35 headphones, Halloween costumes, and hoodie jackets. The headphone one felt unfair. Some people used those to help control noise. This was a rowdy school. It was always loud and students talked over teachers. Sometimes the only way to focus was to use headphones. The Halloween costumes one was stupid. Religious parents were having tantrums over the holiday and complained until the school bent the knee and basically banned celebrating Halloween in school. Never understood the banning of hoodie jackets. That was banned before I was in high school. It just remained in effect while I was in school. Many a time did students complain when it rained they couldn't keep their head dry. None of these rules applied to teachers. They could do all of these things. It just applied to students. Story 36. This is oddly specific, but eons ago, Quiznos Subs had a commercial with these weird little spongy-looking things with googly eyes that would sing a song with like a high-pitched, shrilly voice. Singing the song, referring to the little sponge things, and talking about Quiznos was automatic detention when I was in middle school. Story 37. Hats, overalls, open-toed shoes, visible bra straps, pagers, I'm old. And at the very end of my senior year, they banned regular book bags. And if you used a bag, it had to be clear. This was in a semi-rural, small, conservative Michigan town where nothing ever happened, but the district was terrified of gangs for some reason. Peak conservative pearl clutching, 